Hey, 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 what's going on? It's mine, Daddy. Noah keeps taking away from me. Noah, give it back. No. Noah, give it back. No! I said give it back now. Mm. Noah! <laughs> Larry, what the hell is you... Oh, Larry! Larry, you can't just... Oh, Larry! Oh, are you all right? How did... Larry! Hello class, Professor Sunrise here. In today's class, I know you've seen it in the title already, we are talking about pure sprite again. It is basically the same list again. Uh, I've just done a few switches here and there, but honestly, these switches feel insanely strong and I highly encourage you guys to check it out. It feels super strong, could even be stronger than a pre band list with a toad. It just com comes down to the amount of uh, hand traps you can effectively use in the format. But this deep draw ver version of pure sprite feels incredibly strong. I found a very strong tech and it plays super well with my uh, tech choices I did before that. Um, I've seen the card a little bit in Joshua Schmidt's stream. I don't know if people like Nash or like Pack or, or people like that talked about it. I have no information on that, but I feel like this is feels super strong, especially with the Dark Beast engine which we are running. So without further ado, don't forget to like and subscribe, leave some feedback down below, and I promise you guys the next video will not be about a pure sprite deck profile. So without further ado, let's get right into the deck profile. So here we are in the profile. By the way, I had to re-record this a few days later because um, my my uh, data got corrupted um, and so I don't have the footage anymore of, uh, of the actual deck profile and uh, also got a different hoodie on just uh, because it is a different day and I'm sorry uh, if my voice is a little bit different I am currently having a mild flu um, but I got over the worst part so it should be fine by now so let's get into the deck um, what is there to say about this deck um, it didn't really change a lot um, honestly uh, just mostly one card but um, I think with just one card the deck plays way better um, and also, most importantly, I just got a lot of more information about the deck, how you want to prioritize your resources, stuff like that. So I'm just going to go over this card by card. Of course, we're still at the clean 40. Um, for the sprite engine, of course, the nine broken cards. And then still, I am on the 2 to 2 ratio. Um, definitely, in my opinion, the way to go for now. Uh, I could see myself cutting any of these two. Uh, one of them um but honestly it just feels so good if you think about it these cards are just extenders and if you have your starters already they are your boss monsters so you really want to actually see like one of them maybe and with the way the deck now plays and it lacking um a spell trap negate you really want to see your Karen. so if you see any of these you can then with your uh jet get the starter so if you get see any of these you basically have the full engine available to you most of the time Making it so that you have carrot plus smashers and a monster negate through uh, different means, uh, or red plus smashers, and you don't need a spell trap negate because it's game one, stuff like that. Um, so it feels really good to play them in multiples, and of course, we are still on the desires. Uh, so I really want to have a 2 to 2 ratio because I want to resolve every single one of them at least once. Um, and the second start uh, smasher also comes up. Lots of people really want to play two smashers in the main. Uh, as smashers, I meant not starters. Um, so it feels really good to just have two of them in the game, uh, in, in, in the deck. Uh, it really is like the uh, if they try, try to crack our board and they maybe get rid of most of our resources and we just rebuild next turn immediately. Lots of times the, the second smash is just is like the, the, the neck breaker where they cannot really co uh, compete on the board afterwards. If you just completely rebuild and you basically build the same board as you built uh, turn one. Uh, because you have the second smashes in the deck. So I really like the ratios for these. Um, going second they do kind of suck. Um, a little bit, uh, but honestly, it is fine if you draw three sprite cards. You feel super good, especially going first and going second. If they don't have spot removal, these help you break boards immensely just because they force our destruction quite well. Um, so I really like this big sprite engine. Um, and of course, it feels really mandatory with, with the um, with the desires. Uh, so for the um, Beckoning Beast package, I am still on the 5 normals, uh, I tried this as a 6th time, but it really breaks in multiples, you don't ever want to see more than 2 cards of these, um, and even then, it is better to not see this than to see this in multiples, um, though this engine is super strong, of course it plays around disruption so well, it gives you follow up, and especially with the new edition, the cap shell, this card is insane. This is also a feat with 0 attack, 0 defense, and it, it draws you 1 card if it gets tributed, so you can tribute them with the dark and uh, with the carrot and the red. If it goes into the um, graveyard for any summon apart from XZs, so you can link it off into elf, into whatever you want and get to draw one. 
and if it gets detached from an Xyz, you get also draw. So you can put this under a Gin Buster, you can put this under um, a Soul Sweeper, and you get to draw one. This is a hard one per turn, so you can only trigger one of them. But what this does, it gives the, it fixes the deck's weakness, quote unquote, where you had nothing to summon off the Gigantic, and you can just summon this off the Gigantic, um, link into Elf, draw into more hand traps, and then you can revive it with Elf and put it under your Gin Buster because it is a dark, and then you can draw one more in the opponent's turn. Make it so that your main combo lets you draw two. With all the hand traps we play, we draw into hand traps a shit ton of times, giving us Dark Ruler protection because we just have follow up plus hand trap. Um, really strong card. And also, this is, like I said, a zero, zero fiend. So we can normal summon this with our um, Beckoning Beast. We can revive this with our um, opening of the Spirit Gate, making it so that this is just a free re recurrable body after we put up our setup. So this card is completely broken and lets you grind like crazy. Getting all of these extra draws is insane. And I'm going to showcase you guys the combos with this, of course. And then, of course, two desires. Um, really strong card. I am... Um, like it more and more, the more you play with it, the more you really don't care about your main deck too much. Opening up your extra deck for lots of utility cards is also good. Um, really strong card, of course. Um, really like it. Not missing the totes whatsoever. The rest of the deck is just hand trips. Nothing changed here. Three Ash. Really got better even now post ban list with the um, Fusion Destiny and... Um, Bloody Servant coming back to three, lots of people are on that deck and testing that out. Uh, three Imperm, three Vela, super generic. Three Nibiru, either it's really strong or really ass. And then three Crow, two Bell. I still kind of want to play three Bell, two Crow. Uh, but most of the times, Crow is just a little better than Bell, apart from the Runic Sprite. And Runic Sprite is getting a little less popular, but this also hits Bloody Servant. So it is really hard to evaluate what I want to play three, what I want to play two. But the main reason... I still stick to this ratio, it's just Crow is just that slight bit better going uh, into the T-Elements, just because you banish the Aqua Monster, which they lots of times can still value off um, if you keep it in the graveyard, because they have then the additional body to Fusion Summon with. So, um, yeah, I'm sticking with this ratio, and honestly, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, 17 hand traps, it is in the main deck, still a clean 40, like I said. Um, Nothing really too special about them. I'm really happy with how they play out, and I wouldn't change anything apart from the one ghost spell, maybe. For the extra deck, I don't think I changed a lot in here. Of course, three elf um, for the links. Uh, one army rush to make the um, opening of the spirit gate, so one card combo into sprite engine, uh, similar to the swap fog uh, play, basically the same as the swap fog play. Um, and this also helps you to link off your, um, your back beckoning beast into this. Of course, you normal summon, normal summon the other one, you link off in the uh, Army Rush, and now you can protect your more important monsters, like a Gigantic from a Pop, for example. Um, and if nothing happens, you can just use this to link into an Elf, so that's a play which can come up. Um, one Phoenix, uh, I think I added this one, because uh, you can use uh, the Dark Beckoning Beast engine to out a rivalry with just the engine, which is really helpful, so if you have Beckoning Beast plus, like, Starter or something, you're not, like, okay, if there's a rivalry, I really want to just play with a Starter. Um, or like a normal summon and a, uh, and a blue or something, like normal summon jet, summon blue just because you don't want to play into um, into a rivalry, and this helps uh, with that, and also it just feels like a ger very good generic card, and with the capsule we really do not struggle with hand size whatsoever. Um, one unicorn, probably want to cut this for a mascarena, but I, for now I don't have mine, I, I've lent it out, um, but honestly this doesn't really come up too often, uh, one dark, of course, really broken now with DPE, a little bit more in the format. Uh, comes up plenty of times. And one zero Boros to OTK. Uh, really like this card. Uh, this is why I want to play Mascarena, because I want to use this card more as a dis uh, destruction tool. And then OTK afterwards, making OTKs a little easier. But plenty of times this deck relies on starter in the own turn to get a carrot. So plays like these don't really come up too often. So I'm not too key, um, like putting that too much um, pressure and priority on having uh, these options available. And Unicorn is just a cute tool to out stuff, which we struggle with. Uh, so that's good. Uh, two Gigantic. Of course, one for combo, one to run over stuff. One Gin Buster to end on with Capsule. This card is insane. Uh, one Soul Sweeper, mandatory to out stuff and help OTK. Uh, this use package with the Sky Cavalry to also out stuff. Pretty standard extra deck, I would say. Um... Nothing to really write home about here. For the side tech, of course, this is where a lot of the deck's strength lies because I can feel feel very comfortably just playing D Shifter. Um, because we going first, we just set up the sprite lock of uh, the sprite game where we, especially with hard runs, red and carrots, they really help with the D Shifter just because you don't really need a lot of them. 
to like turn off like normal summon red and then you summon blue jet gets starter and then you uh, maybe even have a hard run carrot just because you play so many of them and then you have like the full sprite board plus d shifter plus follow up and the opponent basically has to pass all the little resources um the little place they could have get stopped by the sprite cards on board and the next turn end phase you flip the starter get the blue get the jet and next turn you just otk them with zero boros um really strong card um, and going second it is a little bit less good but it's still plenty good you probably just want to go for a zeus line uh if you de-shift to them then for going first floodgates i'm currently on two d barrier one summon limit just because i want to test it uh, how it performs but i'm not really a big fan of it just because Plenty of times this deck is a one card engine deck um, and you sometimes you just have two starters and three defensive cards and if you get like two a summon limit, two hand traps and uh, two starters and your starter gets ashed and you cannot really play next turn so I really just want the, the turn skips uh, not the lingering floodgates uh, so I probably want to play three the barrier but like I said I'm testing and still want a pointer to uh, get rid of nasty cards mostly super polarization or force them out. And then a shit ton of back raid, one pank, one feather luster, three lightning storm, and three uh, cosmic. Cosmic, of course, really good against plenty of matchups. Side this in a lot. Could even main deck it and get rid of a few of the hand traps. But the way we play, we draw into our hand traps in the opponent's turn. So I really want to maximize my chance of seeing a hand trap there. Um, lightning storm also really good against flunder. <laughs> They're mostly there for runic sprite. While these are not really as good against runic sprite, they still go one for one and plenty of times. The one for one trade is against um, a very good uh, runic card because that's what they mostly have. Uh, so they still trade with a pop or a, with a negate, so that's still fine in my book. And they are also just really good against plenty of other decks, so I don't feel too bad about, about running them. So that's it for the deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let's take a look at one or two uh, quick combos. So let's take a look at the standard combo where we have one blue and one um, dark beckoning beast. There are multiple ways to get in this combo, but this is like the most streamlined uh, so we start off with normal summoning this search this activate this search this uh, so now we take our extra normal summon and we summon blue effect blue uh, we'll search our jet here we could go into a gin bus already to protect our place but we have different ways to protect our place and this locks us from having a um what's it called um uh, uh crab shell under our gin buster which of course is what we want to do for example if we have a red or carrot heart run we can still go for this play because then we can just put the um cap shell under elf or somewhere else and we can just tribute it for carrot or red still getting the draw on the opponent's turn but let's just play it how we have it and we let's just say these are three hand traps so now we turn these two into a gigantic effect gigantic um detach the blue and summon out the cap shell now we turn these two no we before we turn these two into that we of course would use the jet to search um depending on the matchup depending on the uh, uh game if it's game one i would still go for smashers and i wouldn't use these um carrot uh but depending on post side you really want to put high emphasis on carrot uh, just because uh, spell trap negates are re very important with evenly being in the format a little bit more here and there um so i would go for a carrot post side but if we have three hand traps, for example i would probably go for um uh, a starter search even in game one just because we really want to um keep our engine alive but let's just go for his smashes um now we can go for a draw just because um of course we want to thin out our deck before we draw effect capture we draw another card so we have four cards in hand and now we can just turn these two uh no don't do that of course we use the um elf to go into cap shell and now we turn these two into our gin buster and now even if we played the mascarena for example which is why i want to kind of play it we can use the opening of the spirit gates detach the card which we drew revive uh, the beckoning beast and then we can turn these into a mascarena and again elf mascarena gin buster with another draw could be very good um, but like I said, a lot of times I would search a starter with this instead of this. Um, and most of the time this would turn off the Mascarena play, which we could do. So I really don't want to go for it. Um, yeah, but these are things which could happen depending on the meta. For example, if Smashers gets less good, you could definitely um, take an approach like that. Uh, really highly depends, but I really am happy with how it plays out right now just because it is so resource efficient. So let's take a look at another uh, combo. So this combo is quite similar 
uh, just plays with one red and one blue, but you still get plenty of disruption that way. So we know some on the red, get the blue. Uh, let's put our cards in hand here again. Get the jet, summon jet. Um, plenty of times I would actually go for um, uh, a starter here. So let's just take a starter route this time. And so now we go into gigantic. Um, like I said, the reason I go for the starter plenty of times is just because uh, get, keeping the um, keeping the engine alive is so important in this deck. And plenty of times you will have two to three cards in hand, uh, which being being hand traps. Uh, so you won't really need that ma much of disruption. And if you know how to use them, it doesn't really matter that the opponent cracks the board as long as they don't really put on lots of disruption any um, there uh, on their board. You are fine with just the recursion your sprite engine offers to you. Uh, so we use the gigantic effect. Summon this, we go into Elf, um, Effect Capsule, we draw another card, and then we can, depending on the matchup of course, uh, we will revive the Capsule here, and then we could even use the starter to um, get a carrot out, for example against Invoke Dogma, I would definitely go for that, because having a spell negate up early against them is very important, uh, if it's... Uh, if it's T elements, for example, and there could still be main decking Dark Rule, I would try not to go for that. But here we have the ability to tribute the capsule with either red or carrot to get another draw on the opponent's turn. Have the follow up with the elf. Uh, we have four cards in hand, five with the draw on the opponent's turn. So there will be plenty of hand traps waiting for the opponent. And we just basically need one jet to resolve next turn, getting our ourselves a starter to still be in the game and keep grinding out the opponent. Um, so, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. Um, this deck is super fun to play. It like, feels like a super pure approach to Sprite, just a shit ton of hand trap and just really putting a lot of emphasis on elf control. Um, this deck is super fun to play. I can just highly recommend you guys. It, it basically is the same as the frog variant, just a little less explosive, making so that you have to rely on hand traps even more, especially because lots of your disruption and power now is in the capsule. Draw two, drawing into hand traps, you will be forced to even even more to be forced into hand trapping your uh, opponent appropriately and I can honestly say most of the games I lost were because uh, at my fault because I was not evaluating my engine properly uh, stuff like that uh, of course there are sacks but there were was never really a time where I was just out gas and I couldn't keep up with my opponent it was always almost always my fault uh, or the opponent just had everything and it just, just happens that's just how Yu-Gi-Oh is so Hope you guys enjoyed this profile. Definitely check this deck out if you want to get good at the game. Um, classes dismissed. Professor Sunrise out. Peace.